Is it normal to look worse during the early phase of losing weight? And how long does this phase last? That's a great question. And I'm actually glad you asked that. Yes, it is. Let's say you're bulking up, right? You're, you're eating a ton of food and you're all full and bloated and glycogen levels are topped up and everything else, but you got a layer of body fat, right? You're, you're, so you feel strong, you feel big, but you got some extra fat. So then you start going into a calorie deficit to lose weight. Once you do that, what's going to happen is now all of a sudden your glycogen levels are not to, topped up. So you might, it's almost like letting some air out of the balloon. So your muscles don't have that full level of glycogen in them anymore, but you still have the same amount of body fat on the surface. So now you feel weaker, you feel, you don't feel as full, but you still got just as much body fat. And you're like, oh, I'm losing muscle. I, I, I look, I look skinny fat now because I don't feel as full and I, I'm still just as fat, so I'm skinny fat. And then you get all frustrated and then you go on a bulk again. <laughs> and then you end up getting, you top up your glycogen stores, but then once you top them up, then all the excess gets stored as even more body fat. So in that initial phase, when you reduce your calories, you're probably gonna feel weaker. Your muscles are probably gonna feel flatter and you're not gonna look any leaner because you still got the same level of body fat on the surface. So in that initial phase, yeah, you, you're you gonna look and feel worse, but you need to go through that phase, like suck it up buttercup and go through that phase and realize that once you start creating that calorie deficit and sustain that over the long term, now you're gonna start to trim off that surface layer of body fat. And you're also going to start adapting to what it's like to operate with less excess calories in your system. And your body's actually gonna to start to utilize your stored body fat for energy. So now to fuel some of your training and to fuel some of your day-to-day -day activities, it's not just all gonna be coming from food sources, it's gonna be coming from food and body fat, right? Your, your body will actually start to tap into burning stored body fat. But if you're always in a calorie surplus, there's no reason for your body to be utilizing that fat. Right, if that's that's like reserve. We're gonna store that fat for when there's a famine, you know, and and we we there's no food available for months on end. We, we we're we're built for survival, right? That's why we've survived as long as we have as a species, right? The humans are the top of the food chain. We we're very efficient at at preparing for survival. So we all have this layer of reserve of energy called a gut. <laughs> so you want to start training your body to tap into burning that reserve energy and you need to be in a calorie deficit in order to do that but it takes a while for you to start to adapt and get into that but once you're into that phase and you start losing some of that surface layer of body fat then the skin starts to thin and you start to look better and you actually start to feel more energy with your workouts because now you're not only rel relying on dietary calories but you're also re relying on body fat calories to help fuel your energy demands and you will start to feel better, you will start to look better, but it takes several weeks in that transition phase. And it's in that transition phase where most guys give up and quit because you know they go from eating whatever the hell they want, a, you know, i.e. bulking, <laughs> to having a calorie deficit, and now all of a sudden like, oh, I don't feel as strong, I don't feel as full, I'm losing muscle, screw this, I'm going back to bulking. But if you can just go through that like, and, and realize the bigger picture of what's happening here and go through that phase, you will start to come out on the other end where now you, you burn that surface layer of body fat. Your energy levels start to stabilize. You start to feel better and, and look better. And then, of course, the leaner you get, the better you look. And then it's, it starts to snowball from there. But you got to go through that initial phase. And it's this is the hardest phase. Like this is when I'm coaching people, this is where I, I got to be holding their hand and reinforcing them and guiding them along because it's that initial phase where everyone has full of self-doubt and and worry and they're like oh my god i don't know if this is going to work or not man i cut my calories and i don't i'm not as strong as i was i don't feel like i'm still fat but I, my, my muscles are not as full i don't know man i don't know and then everyone's doubting i think i should right think i should have a cheat meal <laughs> right you're right i, I feel I, I didn't hit my, the same weight on the bench press. I think I should have a cheat meal. I don't know. I don't know. And everyone's like, and I got to be like holding their hand and you're like, you know, stay with me. Trust me. You know, 
I'm going to guide you across the bridge, right? Just, just trust the process. And those that trust the process, they'll come out the other side leaner and more muscular because of it. But those who give in to self-doubt and worry and everything else, they're going to stay fat and bloated. And yeah, okay, you might make good gains and be the, the big bulky guy, but you'll never ever see any muscle definition. You'll just be fat and smooth. Right? And so you, you need to trust that process. Trust the process and realize that that is normal. It's it's totally normal. And how how long does it last? I mean, it really depends on how much extra body fat you're carrying, like until you really start to see the results. But just to put some real numbers out there or some some guidelines, back in the day when I'd be competing in bodybuilding and I was going through this on a regular basis, I got to I got myself conditioned. Like I didn't even count the first month of dieting. Like I just said, you know, I'm just going to suck it up and go through the motions. I'm not even. I'm not even going to worry about my, my progress or my strength gains or nothing like that. Like I usually would take my before pictures before I started and take my before measurements. And I just take that and tuck it away and then forget about it. And then I say, okay, I'm going on my pre-contest diet. I'm going to start doing the cardio and all that. And I would just go through the motions and I just say like, I don't even care about the results. I'm not going to track my progress. I'm not going to step on the scale. I'm not going to worry about anything. I'm just going to just be like a robot and eat, sleep, train, <laughs> repeat. Like I would go through the motions and, and not even have any emotional attachment to the outcome. And I found like after that first month was over, then I would start getting into the groove. So like that first month was my initiation phase, if you will, to go through that. And then I would start to start losing some of the body fat. My body was starting to adapt to utilizing the stored body fat for energy. And I'd feel better. And very often then I could start making some new progress in a fat loss phase, you know, and so at least a month, I mean, it may take longer depending on the individual, but like, it's so, so crazy. I see people say like, Oh, I, I went on a diet and I, I quit after two weeks. Like two weeks is not long enough to, to see any changes or to feel the changes. Like you need to give it a minimum of a month. And, and ideally I'd even say, Hey, Hey, three months. Like if you got a lot of fat to lose, like 50 plus pounds or more, like give yourself three months of this. Like don't quit too soon. That's the reason why most people fail. It's not that they're doing things wrong or they don't know what to do or whatever, is they give up on themselves too damn soon. Like give like give yourself time to change, right? Like it's don't give up, don't be, don't be too eager to quit and throw in the towel. Like a lot of people, they're all, like they start a program and they're looking for an excuse to quit the moment they start right <laughs> just give me a reason right give me a reason to say no give me a reason to quit give me a reason to throw in the towel like instead of that look for a reason to keep going you know and if you can have that persistence and keep going uh, even when you don't see the results initially but you keep going like you have faith right we, we have we talk about faith in so many things like faith whether it's in religion and spiritual or whatever but have faith have faith that what you're doing is going to produce results and if you can have the faith and trust the process and stick to it, you will come out the other side. And if you don't have that faith and you don't and you can't trust the process and you give in to self doubt too soon, then you're not going to get the results. Simple as that. So this is where having a coach can help you. And again, it goes way beyond just the tactics of here's your diet, here's your macros, here's your calories, here's your workout split. Like someone who can help you deal with all that internal friction and self doubt and crap that goes on in, in up here like it, it's the, the reason why people don't succeed is very rarely physical like meaning the calories or the macros or the the workout split or the know-how it's usually their own internal friction their own internal ambivalence and resistance to change that's where most people fail it's it's very rarely oh i don't know the calories or i don't know the workouts or i don't know what to do it's it's all up there <laughs> So if you can master the mental side, the physical side is easy.